Hi everyone, Harry Frank here from Red Giant. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you screen text from Red Giant Universe. Screen text renders type character by character, and it's very useful for creating code scroll kind of animations like you see here. So in this lesson, I'll use screen text to create these flowing blocks of code and also use it for this basic title right here. Like any effect, screen text needs something to be applied to. So in Premiere, I'll use a piece of black video, which we can create by going to File New, Black Video. Now I can either go to my effects and locate the RG Universe text category and then locate screen text inside there. Or if I'm a user of Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects, I can pull up the RG Universe dashboard, which if you cannot find it, it's under Window Extensions RG Universe Dashboard. I can click on the word Universe to browse all of the plugins, or I can select the specific category that I need, which is text. And in here, I'll locate screen text, and I can either click Apply Effect or just double click on the thumbnail to apply it to my selected clip. The default content is pretty short, but there's some presets in here to get you started. So if I go back to my dashboard and I single click on screen text, you'll see that there are a number of different code examples in here that we can load. So if I select this JavaScript one and double click, it'll replace that content with the JavaScript example. Now let's go to the effect controls and see how this thing works. Now, if at any point you want to edit, change, or replace your text, you can simply click on the Edit Text button and bring up the Edit Text window. Note that this is also where you will go to change your font. Next, we'll probably want to adjust the scroll rate. The scroll rate is expressed in characters per second. If I set this to 300, this will give us a pretty fast moving block of code. Now the next few parameters in here affect the scroll behavior. This checkbox that says shift lines up, with this checked, the lines will shift up at the end of each line. They'll start moving up at this value right here, the line shift start. So if I set this to 20 and I leave shift lines up checked, this will draw on 20 lines. And then once it gets to that 20th line, then it will start to scroll upward. So as you can see, you can do a lot with the scrolling behavior without having to add any keyframes. However, if you want more detailed control and you don't want an automated scroll rate, you can set the scroll rate to zero and manually offset everything with the scroll offset. This is a normalized value from zero to 100%. So that means from zero to 100%, that is going to cover the entire length of your source, if it's 10 lines, 100 lines, or even 1,000 lines. This is probably most useful if you want to stop and start your animation. I think for what I'm doing here though, I can set the scroll rate to 300 and get rid of that scroll offset value. From here, I'll format the text a little bit. I'll go to the text settings. Now for what I'm doing here to create sort of a design element, I think I can get away with a pretty small font size. So I'll use a size of 12. I'll set the color to green. And I can add a couple of effects on here that are built in. If I go to effects, I can enable a soft glow on my text. And I can also enable some scan lines. Let me zoom in to 100% here just so we can see this. So here's the glow on and off and the scan lines. Scan lines give you that sort of terminal screen kind of effect if that's what you're looking for. I'll adjust the position and just kind of shift it over to the left a little bit and a little bit up. There. Now I'll use something similar to create another design element over on the right side. I'll just take this layer and duplicate it by holding down Alt or Option and dragging the clip to another video track. Now I'll select this one, go to my screen text settings, and I'll start by moving the position over to the right. I'll make this one blue. And I'll load a different code example in here. So I'll go back to my dashboard by clicking Choose a Preset. And for this one, we will load um, a keylogger. This is a just a batch of C++ code. Actually, those look pretty similar. Let's get something that looks a little different. Let's go to the Nmap scan. So now that I've got those two background elements in, I'm going to duplicate this layer one more time, holding Alt 
or option, dragging that clip up. And we'll use this to create a basic title. So I'll edit the text here, and I'll just edit this down to a single word. And I'll set the size to 96. And maybe we can use more of a compressed font. So I'll move the position over. And it will automatically animate. 300 characters per second is probably going to be pretty fast for this. So I'll set this to maybe 8. Now, once this types on, uh, I can add a little bit of randomness to these characters. I'm going to animate the randomness in and out. So I'll start the random characters at 0, go forward in time just a little bit, and I'll set this to maybe 30. This is more or less an arbitrary value. You're just going to turn this up, and the odds that you will have random characters will increase. It's not a percentage or anything like that, because doing an exact percentage in long code scrolls of thousands of characters, it becomes really inefficient. So this is just a basic turn it up and you get more random characters kind of control. So I'm going to animate it back from that 30 and down to 0. So the result is that it's going to reveal, and then as it sits there, it will flicker to a couple different random characters. Maybe I need just a little bit more randomization. Let me go back here. I'll drag this last keyframe forward just a little bit to get some more of that randomization. And at this peak here, maybe I'll set this to 100. So just a little bit of a flicker in there. In fact, what we could do is just copy and paste these keyframes a few times to give it a little bit more of that flickering effect. So I'll select these keyframes, hit Copy, and paste them a couple more times. And in that peak, maybe we can just kind of vary what this value is. So maybe this one will just be 20, and this one will go to 300, and I'll drag that keyframe forward a little bit. So just kind of mixing up the, the animation values. And if I play through this, we see we've assembled a, a basic little title right here in Adobe Premiere, just using a few different layers. Last thing I'd like to cover is the cursor in screen text. We can edit the cursor by going to the cursor section, and we can enable or disable the cursor by checking the use cursor. But the type that it's using right now is a solid box. If I set this to an inverted square, notice that it actually brings it back one character because it has to be on top of a character for us to see the inverted effect. So now we have this sort of typing on, and the cursor automatically moves along with it. By default, it does use the same color as the text, but if you'd like to kind of mix it up in terms of what that cursor color is, we can uncheck Use Text Color and set the cursor color manually. And it also has an on and off duration. So if I set this to maybe 20 and 2, it will have a long on duration and a short off duration. If you want it to not blink, you can just set the off duration to 0. But I'll leave that set to 2. So once it gets to the end, we'll see it sort of do that kind of blinking pulse like that. So I think that about covers it. That is Screen Text from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next video.